Might want to keep the calculator handy. Just wait until Barry gets to face one of those really bad pitching staffs in the National League. As for now, he just continues to dent the Dodgers. After his opening day effort, Barry Bonds has 57 career multi-homer games, fifth most all time. So much more surprising than Bonds going big fly twice was the fact he wasn't walked once. The giant slugger enjoys doing things no one else has ever done, like walking 177 times last season. Then there was the matter of those 73 long balls. So it's likely he'd have no interest at all in another multi-homer game. After all, it's been done before. Once in 1958, Eddie Matthews started the season with consecutive multi-homer games. Giants and Dodgers are fighting off the field about start times. On the field, Hideo Nomo making his first start for the Dodgers since May of 98, facing Barry. Deep to right field. Way, way back. Look at this one, Kerry. Wow. He did it again. He did it again, and he's going to do it again, again. Bond's third home run in two days. Here's a good idea. Jim Tracy decided to intentionally walk Barry on the top of the second, but he pitched to him in the fourth. <laughs> this one is crushed to right field. He's done it once again. Unbelievable. Solo shot, Bonds, four home runs in two days. It's 5 nothing Giants. Still in the fourth after a Benito Santiago three-run home run. Russ Ortiz, the pitcher of Terry Mulholland, get out of town. 10 nothing Giants, ugly, embarrassing for the Dodgers at home. Still 10 nothing. Mulholland, the full pitch, you want to call it intentional or unintentional. Either way, it's a walk. And that would end the night for Barry. He goes two for two, two home runs and two walks. That home run against Mulholland, Terry has now given up eight home runs to Bonds. That's tied for the most by any pitcher. John Smoltz and Greg Maddox have also given up eight to Barry. The Giants and Dodgers have met 2,172 times all time. This was tied for the second largest shutout victory back in the 40s. They played a 16 to nothing game. As for Bonds, he's hitting 833 on the season. <laughs> he has four home runs and nine RBIs. I just try to see it and hit it and try to get in the right position to be able to make good contact. You know, I'm strong enough to hit the ball out of the ballpark. You know, it's just trying to stay consistent and make contact. I'm just going to go day by day. And, you know, hopefully, we get, if we get big enough leads, I don't have to play the whole game. <laughs> Well, as you know, from the middle of May to the end of last season, Barry was just amazing, and the offseason hasn't exactly stopped him. Four home runs already. Since May 17th of last year, Barry with 62 home runs, hitting 354, a home run every 5.92 at bats. In 2001, Bonds hit a homer every 6.5 at bats, establishing, yes, a new major league record. What's also amazing is that in the span of those 62 home runs, Barry's only struck out 65 times. The champion Diamondbacks hosting the Padres, and Randy Johnson received his third straight Cy Young Award prior to the game. Here's Mark Grace, the bottom of the eighth. Diamondbacks down 5-4. He used to be a doubles hitter. He's a home run hitter now. Game tied at five. Grace, second jack of the year. Top nine, Phil Nevin rips it down the left field line. D'Angelo Jimenez would score. Ron Gant trying to score from first not all that close make it 8-5 Padres so here's Trevor Hoffman two on two outs in the bottom of the ninth and Grace the blooper in the left drops in Tony Womack scores Diamondbacks down 8-7 two batters later bases loaded Hoffman does get Steve Finley to pop out to Tom Lampkin and that is your ball game the Padres win 8-7 San Diego scoring eight after being blanked by Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling in the first couple of games. He back starter Brian Anderson allowed five runs and seven hits and four rings of work. Mark Grace and Steve Finley each with a home run. The Anaheim Angels was scratched from his start against them Wednesday, the same day it was revealed that his wife, actress Tawny Katane, had been charged with spousal abuse and battery after allegedly kicking Finley in the car on the way home from dinner Monday night. Indians GM Mark Shapiro received a call from Finley who told him he didn't feel he could make it to the ballpark and wouldn't be able to pitch. Indians take it on the Angels, and you've got Ryan Drees starting in place of Chuck Finley. Bottom one, sacks jammed. We're in a tight spot, a tight spot. But then Drees gets Brad Fulmer to knock it out of the 4-6-3 DP. Drees, five and two-thirds, three earned runs. Top to second. Runners on first and second. Matt Lawton rips the Aaron Seeley delivery over the head of Darren Erstadt. Two runs. Gonna come on in. 
Lawton gets a double. It's 3-1 try. Top eight. Indians now lead it 4-3. Ricky Gutierrez, Donnie Wall. Ricky Gutierrez wins this battle. It's a home run. His first as an Indian. We move down to the bottom of the ninth. Tying run on second for the Halos. Bob Wickman, big swinger. Troy Gloss goes down swinging. And the Indians hold on to win it 6-5. to five. Matt Lawton started the season 0-6, for 2-5 for five in this one with two RBIs. Ryan Dries, as I mentioned, gave up just nine hits in those five and two-thirds. Aaron Seeley, five innings pitched, four earned runs. He has lost his last four starts versus the Indians. We stay out west. Barry Zito, part of the A's dynamic trio of pitchers to start the season. Mulder shut down the Rangers, then Tim Hudson. Impressive as well. Army style, you go left, right, left. Top two, A's up 3 nothing. And Yvonne Rodriguez at the dish, and this is just a big old hideous curveball. And Pudge, not at all happy. He sets down six innings, five hits, one earned run. Zito, 5 0 lifetime versus Texas. We moved out of the bottom of the eighth, the game tied at six. Scott Hatterberg up with the bases loaded, delivers the single off Damaselli. One run comes in to score. A's up 7 to 6. They add a couple more and win it 9 to 6. A's with five runs in their final two at bats. They become the sixth major league team since 1900 to win at least 20 consecutive games at home. David Justice, good to have him in the Bay Area. Second home run of the season. He's batting five hundy with six ribs. A-Rod 0 for 5. He is yet to get a hit. It's two on, two out for Paul Abbott. Royce Clayton, the blast to center. And the park would not hold it. That's Clayton's first of the year. So he's three behind Barry in the Major League home run chase. White Sox up 6-3. Bottom nine, 6-3 game. Base low to one out. Keith Falk the closer. Carlos Guillen, base hit. John Oler and Jeff Cirillo score. We got a 6-5 game, and here we go. Your next batter, Ichiro. What would you expect him to do? Exactly. Rip job to center. Scores Luis Ugeto. We're tied at six. Two batters later, Brett Boone with two down. And Boone comes through with the base hit. That scores Guillen to win the game. And the Mariners win seven to six. They get four in the bottom of the ninth to do it. Key Falk. Two-thirds of an inning, six hits, four earned runs. He faced eight batters. He gets the blown save and the loss. Ball club, the cards welcoming the Rockies, top of the first. Two on, That's two out. Todd That's Zeal sneaks one inside the line down third base way. And Garrett Stevenson and his first start back since elbow surgery in 2000 is down 2 nothing early after Uribe and Helton coming to score. Todd Hollinsworth, he stings way down the first base line. Here comes Zeal. And just like that, it's 3 out the Rockets. Top of the second, two on, two out. Larry Walker, your batting champ from a year ago, and he can still hit in the 45-degree weather. That's Lumberjack style, baby. Extra wood, 6 nothing. Rocks out in front. Bottom four. Runner on, two out. Denny Nagel cruising, getting some help. Eduardo Perez down the line. Todd Zeal comes up with it, guns it over to first. Rockies go on. To win it six to three, Denny Nagel continues to befuddle and flummox the Redbirds. He's won his last five starts against St. Louis and has eight and won his last nine decisions against them. Larry Walker, the batting champ from a year ago, as I mentioned, he's off to a hot start in that cold weather. Three for seven to start the year. Cubs and Reds and Bonds this and Bonds that. What about Sammy? Top of the six, seven two Cubbies, a man on for Sosa and get out of town. He's on the board, his first home run of the year. And the Cubs will take a 9-2 lead. Top of the ninth, still 9-2. And things starting to get interesting. Reds pitcher Luis Pineda hits Roosevelt Brown on the arm. Uh -oh. Brown will take first base later in the inning. 10-2. Pineda hits Todd Hunley. Pineda ejected by the home plate umpire Mike Everett. Hunley's thinking about it. You don't want to tick off Hot Rod. Have you seen his forearms lately? Man. Both benches clear, no punches thrown. Bob Poole, the Reds manager, not happy with the situation. Check out that situation. He wasn't happy with either. 10 to 3. The Reds are pummeled at home by the Cubs. Sammy hits his first of the season. Kerry Wood strikes out 10 in only five innings. He throws 104 pitches. Wood is 6 0 in seven career starts against Cincinnati with a 1.34 ERA and 71 strikeouts in 47 innings. Corey Patterson drove in a career high four runs in two games so far this season. He's 5 for 7. And again, no Moise Salou for the Cubs.
Well, Oswald making his first start of the season for Houston. Top one, scoreless runner on second. Look at Bags. Jeff Bagwell snags a liner by Jeff Jenkins. Throws the second. Alex Sanchez safe. Look at it again. Definitely saves a run. Bottom four, one nothing Astros. Well, not anymore. Daryl Ward takes Ruben Cavedo way, way out of the yard. Three run shot, four RBI in the night for Ward. Still bottom four. It was an eight run inning. Bagwell grounded a third. Tyler Houston zings at the first. Not in time. And then the throw is going to come home. Not in time. Craig Biggio, the second man to score in an infield single. Bagwell reaches base five times, and the Astros, well, they win it pretty easy. The Astros lineup, I'd say, can be pretty flammable, and they were three homers, 15 hits. Every position starter except Craig Biggio had at least one hit. Roy Oswalt, 3-0 lifetime against Milwaukee, 9-1 lifetime at Astros Field, formerly Enron. I guess you could say he's shredded the opposition. A little baseball, I think that's section 121. David Wells back with the Yanks, bottom one, facing Chris Singleton. And look at the big fella. Right Fielding his position. Boomer was on. Seven and a third innings, four hits, 1K shutout baseball. Top second, Jason Johnson. Facing Jorge Posada, couple on, and Melvin Mora with a great diving grab. Keeps it at goose eggs for now. Top seven, we're still scoreless. Not anymore. Robin Ventura to deep right field, and that's over the big wall in Baltimore. Ventura's first home run. Now Mariano Rivera, best closure in the game, on the mound for the first time since Game 7 in the World Series. Bottom nine, a man on, and Mora loops it to second. Alfonso Soriana squeezes it. That's it. That's all. Yankees win it one nothing. David Wells, welcome back to the boogie down. As a, as a Yankee, his record now 35-14. and 14. Robin Ventura now one home run away from 250 for his career. Baltimore's Jason Johnson, hard luck loser, his vaunted stuff on display, but he's now one in five lifetime. He pitched himself the dandy of the ball game. At the bottom of the fifth, Brent Main facing Milton, and Milton's throwing the gas by him. Ends the inning. Milton retired 19 straight at one point. Here's Mike Sweeney, but there's Torrey Hunter, the gold glove winner from a season ago. Goes up, makes the grab. Check it out again. The great catch by Hunter and Sweeney. Muscled up. Can't believe it. Bottom of the eighth, Chuck Knobloch at the plate. Two on, down one nothing, and Bob Wells gets Knobloch to pop up. Doug Mankiewicz make the catch. Twins go on to win one nothing. Milton and three relievers combined on the three hitter. Get this, it's the second one nothing win in the American League on Wednesday. Last year, the AL had only two one nothing games the entire first three months of the season. Tigers D-Rays bottom eight. D-Rays trailing one nothing. Would there be another one to nothing? Toby Hall. He says no. The heck of your stat. He spanks a single in the left. Here comes Bobby Higginson, Steve Cox with a throw off line scores. We're tied at one. We go to extras. Randy Wynn facing Jeff Farnsworth. Runners on first and second. Wynn in the left. Bobby Higginson sells out. Had to kind of pick his spot, come up and get it or not. Couldn't get it. Bob Brent Abernathy comes in to score. The D-Rays are 2-0 and for the first time in team history. Two games over on ESPN2. Say hi to Vincente Padilla making his first major league start. He's been in games as a reliever. This is his first big league start. Kevin Millwood to Doug Glanville. Fly ball down the right field line. Gary Sheffield makes the catch. Falling over the wall. Jimmy Rollins to tag up. Sheff appears to be hurt. He hurt his hand or wrist on the play, but uh, apparently he's just fine. Check this out. <laughs> Bottom of the second, Sheffield with the bases empty. Yeah, he's fine. Tied at one. Pat Burrow with the bases empty in the fourth. Solo shot off Millwood. Make it 2-1 in favor of Philadelphia. Bottom eight, it's a 3-1 game. Man on for Sheffield. Did he do it again? No. Doug Glanville coming on. You know that feels good on the real grass. Jose Santiago is fired up about the Glanville catch, and the Phillies win in Atlanta. Padilla, his first career start, the guy had made 83 big league relief appearances prior to this start. Solid outing on Mo Vaughn. 300th career home run for Mo, and he put it in proper perspective afterwards, said, hey, it's not 500. Mo's first hit is a Met, gives him a 2-1 lead, and the New York curtain call. Top of the six, Pirates are trailing 2 on Rob McCoyak grounds to second, can of corn, right? Robbie Alomar and boots it, doesn't go off in a sentence together. Can't flip it, rare error for Alomar. Pokey Reese able to take advantage. Lining the Steve Traxel pitch to right, two run score. Both runs were unearned. 3-2 in favor of your Bucks. Top of the seventh, 3-2 Pirates, man on third, two out. Aramis Ramirez. 
lines the Kane Davis pitch to left. That brings Jason Kendall in. Big two out RBI for Ramirez. And the Pirates win five to three. How about Pokey Reese after the offseason? Guy was traded twice, waved once. He goes three for three, drives in three, two of which came after that Alomar error of the 10 time Gold Glover. Mo Vaughn said, I don't think I've ever seen him do that. Tony Armas Jr. on the hill for the Expos against the Fish, and that's bad news. Check out the stats career. 0-6, ERA around seven and a quarter. Top one, the hits just keep on coming. Derek Lee, bases loaded. That's a grand slam. The third team in the history of baseball to have a grand slam in both of their first two games. The other two teams, both the Brewers. It's 4-0 early. That's Lee's second home run. Now, in the ninth at 6-2, and Vlad Guerrero has found a conduit to the heavens. The Expos now trail 6-5. to five. It's getting real dicey. Michael Tejero brought in to face Lee Stevens, winning run. And he stings at the center. Preston Wilson makes the catch. Marlins hold on to win it. Of the bullpen, Cliff Floyd said it's going to be a long year. We don't do a better job in the bullpen, but I'm not worried about those guys. After that big crowd, 